Okay, here's the question. In spring of this year, the citywide rezoning task force submitted its recommendations regarding school closings and redrawing of district lines. What is your opinion of the committee's recommendations and the board's subsequent actions? Um, we'll start with you, Rich Savage. Well, first of all, um, I was a strong supporter of keeping, there were two schools in the 4th District that were, they were looking to either one uh, close, and that was Fisher and South, uh, Southampton. And uh, I spoke very strongly against uh, closing schools. Uh, I, I think that, um, I, I think the board was wise in their decision to not close uh, any of the schools because I, I think what happens there is is there's a lot of unilateral decision making without looking at the long-term effects of when you close a school i mean the the property values in a neighborhood that when a when a school closes the the financial hit that not only you know that the homeowners take but also at the city level is too that that affects tax dollars uh the resale value so many things when when you look at closing schools the the other uh, objection that I have too is is with the fact that um, um, with economic development and everything else it sends a really bad message when when recruiters and, and economic development people and you're, and you're sending a message about closing schools so that's one of the reasons why I developed a teacher blended learning initiative and what that is is laptops uh, that I want to put into Fisher, Southampton and Westover Hills to make these schools viable to get people to select the local schools. We have plenty of people in the neighborhood with children who can go to these schools. We have to do the job as a school board to make them a viable option so uh, these parents choose to stay in the city of Richmond, go to local schools, and, uh, and, and be a part of our community. Okay, Kristen Larson. Thank you. Thank you for asking this question. I followed the rezoning process pretty closely. And for me, I thought that the process was flawed from the beginning. In Henrico, what they did is they went out before they started the process and hired the, the company to come in and be consultants. They went out in the community and they asked the community, what are your priorities for school, for for the school district. From there, they structured the rezoning study so that they were listening to the community first and then responding to the needs of the community so that they could re retain families in the system. What happened with the rezoning study that Richmond did, they, it, it sort of came from the top down. This is what the rezoning study is going to look at. And then the community got I think it was four options to look at, and you could respond only to those options. So I had some issues with the way the process was done. In regards to what action the board has taken so far, they've only voted on the south side. I think they've delayed some of the others for a year or two, and I have problems with that too. They spent a quarter of a million dollars on this study, and they've hardly taken any action. Now, I do support that they kept Southampton and Fisher open. However, Fisher is under-enrolled and they don't have a plan to increase enrollment there. Once I'm on the board, I will come up with a plan to increase enrollment there. I think making that school a magnet school and having it open to the whole city is a great idea. And I think we should provide access and transportation so that all children could access that school if they wanted to. Thank you. Vanessa Womack. Sorry, okay. That's okay. It, it is Vanessa Womack Eastern. That's the name oh, that will appear on the ballot. Uh, <laughs> nevertheless, <laughs> I remember discussions of school zoning before this recent round of uh, school zoning and the task force. I was on. Remember being on one uh, almost eight nine years ago. And some of the same discussions were talked about how the population, the student population in the uh, Richmond Public Schools were dwindling. So just to give just a little history about that, it's been talked about for so long. 
However, with the recent decision to keep both schools open, uh, I hope that if this does come about again, that there is a plan in place to keep them both open if the discussion goes back to, well, we need to close Fisher or Southampton. My children went to Southampton, so uh, I know it's a very good school, and I know the principal at Fisher, so I know that she's doing a great job to keep that school uh, uh, open. However, I have a vision that if that should happen, not only in the 4th District, but in any other district, if you look at closing a school, how do you turn that school around or build the population of students in that school? And that is where some school reform options could come into play. And there are studies that say that you don't have to have an elementary school that says, you know, K through five. You can do a K through eight and uh, entice or build incentives for the families in that district to send their children to that school. Uh, there are good studies and research out there that support this. I also have to say that um, it's an opportunity to help students who might be uh, struggling or have some challenges in their early elementary years to get them reading at, uh, at uh, grade level. This is a very, very interesting um, question and dilemma for the school system, but there are answers out there. Uh, I will continue along the line that Vanessa Womack Easter was heading when she talked about research that shows what really works. Uh, in the latest issue of the Harvard Ed School magazine, which I just got last week, uh, they spotlighted the, and compare K-8 schools to middle schools. And they, they looked at all of the most recent research which showed that students enrolled in K-8 schools do significantly better than <coughs> students who are enrolled in middle schools. All of the latest research is showing that. I think we need to, uh, before we make any decisions about whether to close schools or do anything else with schools, we need to be aware of what all the recent studies are showing that work. Um, I also thought about those, those preschool children who were sent uh, to a school that we know uh, has some environmental issues. What better place to send them than to Fisher? I, I was recently talking with the principal uh, at Fisher and also talking with some of the parents in that community, and they want K-8 schools. And they're wondering how can they get their message across to the school board so that they can have that. They are scared to death of middle schools, a lot of parents are. So this was a golden opportunity that was missed in making this decision, uh, I'm assuming, before surveying the community and finding out what the parents wanted for their children. A lot of, of the parents in that community don't send their children to public schools at all because they just don't trust the way that we have school structure. There are also parents in that school that want their school to be specialized and a magnet type of school. So there are a lot of other things to consider under the mother's design. And thank you. Um, this is the second time that I've been through the rezoning process and the potential of closing um, either one of these schools. When I started at Fisher, it was a magnet school, and we had transportation to Fisher. And to save money, the transportation was cut. I think we need to figure out what we want. I, when the rezoning um, committee started, they were looking at neighborhood schools and Fisher's neighborhood zone. And we ended up with not closing Fisher and going back to a bigger zone without transportation. Um, I. I think that Fisher needs to connect more with the neighborhood, and I think there are ways to do that, working with the principal and the neighborhood associations. Um, if the school were to become a K through eight, then we lose the pre-K 
classes at Fisher, and that's a good opportunity to introduce new families into the school. In fact, I, I think there have been times when they could have had maybe two classes of pre-K and, and did not have space for that. Thank you.